The Oscars are this week. This season has felt like forever, but we have 10 Best Picture nominees to rank from worst to best. Now, just as a point of reference, I pretty much either really like to love a lot of these movies, so this was actually a really hard ranking to do, but after a rewatch, I pretty much have all of these in line to where I want to put them, and I can't wait to see your guys' list down below in the comment section. So again, hit that like and subscribe button, comment down below, and again, look forward to an Oscar reactions video where I'll be reacting to all the winners throughout the night this upcoming Sunday. But of course, it's time to dive into this ranking right now coming down at my number 10 was a movie that I just saw for the first time and that is drive my car so many people were telling me that I was going to love this movie this movie was going to be right up my alley and sadly it didn't work completely for me out of all the movies on this list this is the only one that I actually just like. In fact, there's nothing really bad with it. I can totally see why people are loving this movie. I think the thematics and messaging of grief in this film are excellent, as well as the script. But there's something about the performances that keep me at arm's length. And I understand that that is the point, that they are supposed to feel that way. But there are just elements in there that just really didn't bring me on board, as well with a slow pacing. And usually with the slow pacing, I'm totally fine with the slow burn as long as the finale can bring me in. And even though the ending was powerful, it didn't hit me emotionally like I wanted it to. And maybe this is a film that on time it will finally hit me. But for me, I think the hype had gotten to me on this one and it sadly remains at my number 10. Now at my number 9, it is Nightmare Alley, which I still think is a darn great movie that is just a tad bit too long. I think Bradley Cooper is great in here. I think Del Toro's directing and writing is great. Kate Blanchett, I mean, really much the entire casting here is excellent. In fact, one of the things that I really like about this movie is actually the way that Del Toro tells this story about a monster. The thing about our lives and Del Toro is really much spoken about is that man is kind of a real, real monster. Take out the supernatural element, that is what it is. And Nightmare Alley contains that in such a thematical and rich way that really much had me still thinking about this movie even since I had seen it from December. Then just on rewatches, the film works better. The only reason that it is down at my number nine is for the lacking reason that I do think the film again is way too long for its own good. And again, it has one of the things that while I really liked the ending, this is one of the only few Del Toro movies that I just feel like I couldn't completely latch myself around. But even then, I think this is a thoroughly great, enjoyable ride that I think a lot of you guys should check out. At my number eight, it is Coda, which for me, this is actually one of the front runners right now for the Oscar and I would not be shocked if it won. I know a lot of people are still having the controversy back and forth, but still, Coda is such a feel-good movie that ever since I saw it back last January, I completely adore it. A lot of this also goes down to mostly the performances, which I think are amazing. Amelia Jones is great, and I actually think there was an argument to be made that she should have been nominated. Troy Coatster, for me, is the best supporting actor performance of the year, and it looks like he is going to be winning, and that scene between him and his daughter on the back of their truck was just perfection. This is, again, one of those feel-good movies that you just watch and you feel good good it makes and brings about deaf culture awareness so well and it really in a sense is just a very well written movie that just has a lot of heart and it wears it right on its sleeves this is a movie that i was thoroughly impressed with every single time i've go back and it's one of the few movies that every time someone asks me for a movie they should watch on streaming i tell them to get apple tv so they can watch coda at my number seven we have belfast which for a while i actually thought was going to be the best picture front runner as of right now i don't see how this film wins maybe it could still win script but i doubt it at this point which sucks because i think kenneth Branagh's directing here is probably the best of his entire career i've personally never been a huge kenneth Branagh directing fan i think he is a fantastic actor but belfast had finally won me over on his directing style and just like coda belfast wears its heart right on its sleeves and it shows it in such a daring way this story in ireland of these this one family who's going through it has such fantastic performances every single person in here deserved a nomination Jude Hill is one of the best little stars that we have ever seen probably since Jojo Rabbit and even adding in there Jamie Dornan turns in an Oscar worthy performance where he should have been nominated I'm definitely gonna mispronounce her name Catrion Balf 
who plays the mother of this. She was also fantastic. Shocked she was not nominated. Siren Hines is also amazing. And just when I watched this movie, I just sat there enjoying myself. And I think for me, what this movie feels like is a cinematic treat, one that brings you into this personal story of Belfast to experience the culture and history, and it just feels so rich in there. And that's something that Kenneth Branagh really gave to cinema. Now, at my number six, now, personally for me, I actually really, really like this movie more than the next two, but when I look at this ranking, I also do want to include what do I think is best picture worthy. And for me, looking at this movie, I don't know if it's completely worth like best picture worthy, but I really enjoyed it. And that is Don't Look Up. I know what a lot of you guys are going to say. What? He loved that movie? Yes, I loved this satire that is way in your face, which usually I have issues with movies like that. But this one in particular, I did not. There's something about Adam McKay's directing here that just completely won me over. Every time I've gone back, I just put this thing on in the background. And at multiple points in times, I will tune in and just watch it and enjoy the hell out of it. When I saw it in the theaters, I wish there was more in my crowd because I found this movie to be hilarious in its way. DiCaprio doing a full comedic anxiety type bit just was right to my soul. Jennifer Lawrence is great in here. Meryl Streep is hilarious. Jonah Hill steals a lot of the scenes. Rob Morgan, holy shit, he's fantastic. I literally laughed, laughed, laughed some more and nearly died of laughter at times. But I think for me at the heart of this, which I was so surprised to see that there was actually a heart and soul to this at the very end of the movie, which ties it all together in such, not a whimsical way, but a depressing and realistic way that it really hits your heart in such a sensitive manner that makes you rethink a lot of different aspects and even look deeper into our society as a whole. Again, this movie is very on edge. It knows exactly what it is. It's shoving it in your face, and I'm never going to oppose that. But this movie was tailor-made for me with its humor and how insane it was, and I really love this movie. But... I understand it's not for everyone, so trust me. We have five more nominees to talk about today, so make sure, guys, to hit that like and subscribe button. If you haven't left your comment yet, leave your ranking down below. If you haven't seen one of the movies, that's okay. Let me know if you're looking forward to seeing that other one, as well as look out again for my reaction coming out on Sunday. Really excited to be doing that. I do it the last three years, and I think it's a fun time, so make sure to tune in for that. At my number five, it is West Side Story. This movie has continued to just grow and grow on me. I already loved it the first time I'd seen it, but man, if I could do my top 10 of last year again, I probably would have moved this movie in there. There's something about West Side Story's whole entire monologue and relationship and the way that it really much discusses like the material. Because for me, I don't love the original West Side Story. I know that's blasphemy, but I, I've just never been the biggest fan of it. But this one won me over, and I think a lot of that goes to actually the two main lead performances. Not Ansel Elgort. I actually think he is... Uh, very miscast, not just because of everything going on in the world, but I actually think they could have gotten a better job doing a Tony, but uh, Rachel Zegler gives probably one of my favorite performances of last year. Uh, Anita Ariana DeBose, fantastic. Uh, Mike Feist is amazing as Riff. Like, this for me is, like, led, besides Tony, this movie is brought about in such a, an amazing way, and Steven Spielberg crafted probably one of the best films of his entire career. The cinematography, the dance sequences, everything of that nature feels so special and timely that you can truly say we just don't get films like this anymore. We really don't. This film's like this feels like a movie that Spielberg would have made almost 30, 40 years ago, and even when he makes a movie nowadays. Depending on what it is, like Ready Player One kind of almost gave me the same feeling of blockbuster-wise, not not in the same sensation, but we, again, just do not get movies made like this anymore. And I know that's the cliche way to say it, but it is true. And I feel that the direction that Spielberg was able to give into West Side Story is one of the most important aspects of the entire movie, and truly enough, this is probably one of his best films that he's ever made in his entire career, and that is saying a lot. My number four out of all the movies on this list, it is the one that has grown on me the most, and that is The Power of the Dog. First time I saw this movie, I didn't really know what to feel about it. I didn't even know what to think about it. In fact, this is one of the few movies that I did not review right away. I decided to sit on my review and see the movie one more time before I could review it, which I did. And that second time won me over and it was like, no, this movie is incredible. And I loved it. And I know this movie is not for everyone. It is a slow burn, but thematically it's so rich within its storytelling that Jane Champion does in here, as well as the way that it made me want to dive in 
and learn every little piece of all these characters, the nuances, the substance of the story. Because for me, while the layer of it all is toxic masculinity and elements in there, which again, I'm not going to spoil like if you haven't watched the movie yet, because I think this is a movie that you should experience without knowing much about. For me, was weaved in perfectly through the script, the writing, the directing, but also the performances really take this to that next level. I think every single person does this in such an amazing way. Kristen Dunst is amazing in this. Cody McPhee Smith is excellent. And the relationship that he has with Benedict Cumberbatch, who really much probably turns in his best performance of his entire career, it's amazing. And I cannot forget to mention Jesse Plemons, who again... I feel like gives a very tougher performance in here out of the rest because he doesn't have that much screen time compared to the other ones, but as well is a performance that every single time he's on screen, he has to emote this certain feeling. And there's just certain lines in here that make you really understand like loneliness, isolation, again, toxic, toxic masculinity being a big part of that. And I thoroughly love this movie. Like there, this is out of every movie on this list. This is the one that has just grown on me more and more. I've seen it about four times now and I can't wait to see it again. If this movie were to win best picture, I'd have no issues at all. In fact, I think this movie is probably right next to Coda, the front runner to win. Now at my number three is a controversial pick. I know a lot of people didn't love this movie, but for some reason it jived with me a lot. I know there are quite a few issues with it, which I'll discuss right here because I didn't get to discuss in my review. That is Licorice Pizza. Now PTA, I am hit or miss with him. Sometimes I like when I love his movies, I love his movies. When I don't like his movies, I do not like his movies at all. There's something about Licorice Pizza that won me over with its charm in that weird, awkward stage where you really don't know what you want to do with your life. You have that, I feel like, twice in your life. One, as you're in high school trying to figure out what's that next step for me. And two, in your like mid-20s, you start having that, like, what should I do? And I, I found that to be very relatable in that instance. And here's the other two things I want to talk about. There are some racist elements in here that I feel like did not work on the first time, but when I had reviewed it, I completely forgot about it. It's very prevalent now that that is in there, especially on a rewatch and seeing how much it has stirred up some commotion. It doesn't, it, it bugs me. It does. I, I do not think those scenes were needed to be at all in there. I don't even care. Like PTA's like discussion on it. I also thought was not a great excuse, but also adding in there the relationship between the young boy and the girl it should not have been uh romantic to me i think it should have remained plutonic but for me the reason that this movie is so high up is due to the charm the whimsical the way that it brought me back into the 1970s and i love this time period i never i wasn't alive for that time period but it reminded me of a lot of stuff that my dad would tell me about his stories in that life age and living in that age. But as well as the music and just the adventures, like the summer adventures of these people going around LA and just living their lives. There's just something so great about that that I thoroughly enjoy. I have so much fun with and I laugh my ass off. I smile throughout this movie. And again, I understand why people don't like this movie because of those other two things or they just think the movie is flat out boring. But there's just something important to Licorice Pizza for me that brings back a generation of filmmaking that again, like West Side Story, I just feel like we don't get enough movies like this nowadays. And I feel like PTA went ahead and made a movie that was tailor-made for a lot of other people. And this movie was very much on my wavelength for a majority of its reasoning. And it's one of the few movies out of this list that, again, has just grown on me. Like, I already love this movie. I just continue to love it more. And I know a lot of people don't love this one, and that's fine. But that's why film is so subjective. So I didn't even get to mention it. The cinematography in here is just so damn great it's probably one of my favorite sh pta shot films now at my number two i just got done re-watching this show and the girlfriend for the first time and that is king richard goddamn will smith should get that best actor nomination and he did and he should absolutely win and it's a tough year because i think andrew garfield also deserves it i think benedict cumberbatch deserves it denzel washington showcases why he's one of the best actors javier Bardem, eh, that's he's a good actor but not in that role um but seriously much king richard is the you know we have three heartfelt films in here we have coda belfast and king richard i personally like king richard the most out of all those i think it holds itself on its sleeves i think it has the strongest performance out of the three and i also add in here that i think it's just an important movie that it's one that when announced i wasn't that excited for because i would rather see a story about the girls lives and their bring up and upcoming than the dad but I also did not know and do research that the dad was a monumental support system for the reason that they are where they are now. 
and watching this movie, you see that. Reading about it afterwards, you understand that. And just staying after the credits and seeing all the documentary stuff that their dad had filmed is important. This is a movie that doesn't do too much new stuff to it all. Like, it is very much your basic biopic that has some elements to it of fun. But it's a movie that has so much heart to it. It has some of the best performances of the year, especially the two new upcoming leads. Like, holy crap, they're amazing as Venus and Serena. But Ingenue and Ellis is also amazing. There's an argument made that she should be not, or she should win for Best Supporting Actress. But this is just a film that is irresistibly charming and one that I love. And a lot of that is Will Smith's performance, but a lot of it's the heart that it holds on its sleeves, and I can't recommend this one enough. At my number one, if you've been following me for a while, you knew this was going to be it, and that is Dune. Dune is a cinematic masterpiece that if it was me, I would give this thing every single Oscar. I would have nominated some of the roles, especially Rebecca Ferguson, and Denis Villeneuve would have absolutely been the best director of the year. I think they're pretty much saving this until Dune Part 2 comes out to give him that next award, but God, I love Dune this movie i flew all the way to new york to see this film at the u.s premiere because i had to see this thing as early as possible there's something special about this this new world that we're going to and as someone who honestly never thought like after reading the book picked up the book right after denis was announced because i was like i love denis villeneuve i want to see what he's going to do the book was very difficult to get through and i was like i don't know how you're going to adapt this but denis did it in such a stylistic way that is only tailor-made for him it's thrilling, it's action-packed, but at the same time in its core of it, it's a slow-burning drama that really much hones in and brings about this world of Arrakis to life. Though I don't know how he did it. I really don't. It really made me feel like I was transformed and transported to a whole new planet. And again, like I mentioned, Rebecca Ferguson gave one of my best favorite Best Supporting Actresses performances last year. I love Timothy Chalamet in this. Jason Momoa stole a lot of different scenes. The buildup in this, building up the mythology, the world, the houses, there's so much important layers to it all. It's just a movie that is insane because this is an art house movie with a blockbuster budget. And in a sense, this could be the next big franchise. The action's fun, but the really most important part of it all is building up this world, the characters, the story. And man, Hans Zimmer's score and Greg Pfizer's cinematography is something to marvel at. I can't get enough of this movie. I can't wait for part two. And it's one of the movies that I rewatched the most last year and every single time I did. I loved it even more. My whole ranking of all 10 Best Picture nominees for 2022. Thank you again so much for watching this. Again, hit that like and subscribe button. Look forward to that reaction very soon. I'm looking forward to your rankings down below though. And again, tweet at me. Let me know your guys' thoughts. I am giving away a West Side Story 4K digital copy. So if you want to know how to get on that, make sure to subscribe and also head over to my Twitter right now because there is the competition going on over there for it. But of course, until next time, everybody, stay classy. Mm -hmm.